All right. Last time we read, uh, we were saying, Amal was saying goodbye to her family after her visit. How was her visit? So it was kind of sad, but it was also really good. Do you know, what's a word that means kind of sad, but also really good? Bittersweet. Can you say bittersweet? Bittersweet. So bittersweet means like it was really good, but it also kind of made me feel a little sad. Does that make sense? Like it can be like it's bittersweet for parents when their kids graduate because they're really happy and really proud of their kids, but then they're also kind of sad because their kid's going to go away to college and that makes them a little sad. And it reminds them how old they are. <laughs> Bitter, bittersweet, right? Yeah. Yeah. So bittersweet. So if you didn't know that word, there's a new word for you. Bittersweet. Chapter 36. It felt strange to be back at the Con Estate. The marble tiles, immaculate white hallways, and enormous windows devoid of dust or fingerprints. None of this was foreign anymore. Nazreen had smiled when I brought her tea upon my return. Nabila admired my intricate orange henna designs, and Fatima hugged me and didn't let go until she extracted a promise of a lesson as soon as our work was done. It was strange to step into the house and not feel terrified to see people who welcomed me back. It wasn't long ago I was completely alone there. I pressed Nazreen Bajiz's clothing that night and hung them in the armoire while she reclined on her bed and listened to me describe the wedding. She asked me about the tent and the decorations and the type of jewels in the Shabna's wedding necklace. As I described the velvet wedding dress in full detail and the satchels of dates and almonds and the groom's family passed to each guest, it almost felt like I was gossiping with a friend. The purse she carried was so tiny that it looked like a small fan, but it was big enough to hold all the gift envelopes, I told her. My sister Seema joked it had to have invisible layers hidden within it to keep it, ex keep it expanding. Was my sister there? She asked, yes, and I saw your niece, Sana. She danced with my friends at the wedding. Last time I saw Sana, she couldn't even crawl. Now she's dancing? Crawl, I asked, but she's Seema's age. You haven't seen her in 11 years, she said. Time gets away from you. But it's your family. I bit my tongue. I shouldn't have said anything, but how could she find time to go to Lahore for shopping trips and not have time to see her family who live just 10 minutes away? I went to see them, she said quietly. I used to go once a week when I first got married, but after a while, Khan Sahib thought it was best for his wife not to mingle with villagers. And I agreed, but he takes care of them, makes sure they want for nothing. Nazreen Baji had a bedroom that was practically the size of my house and the finest food and clothing, but she couldn't see the people she wanted to see the most. Her cage was nicer than mine, but it was still a cage. So that was a metaphor there. What is she comparing the house to? A cage. So she's saying that they're both trapped, right? Right? They're both trapped in the house. Nazreen Baji doesn't really have any freedom, even though she's got all this money. She doesn't have the freedom to go see her family because her husband thinks it's not a good idea for her to mingle with the commoners. It's kind of sad. I cleared my throat. I brought something for you. I went into my room and returned with a box. What's this? She smiled. Lattice. I thought you might like them. They look homemade. My neighbor Fazia made it. Shakut's wife. I felt strange saying Fazia's name in this estate, remembering how frightened she had looked. I haven't had a homemade ladu since I was a child. She's known for her sweets. Her daughter is one of my best friends. Nazreen Baji lifted a yellow confection from the box and took a bite. She closed her eyes. Do you like it? She fell silent for a few seconds. It tastes like home, she said. A knock on the bedroom door interrupted us. Jawad Sahib stepped inside. He keeps calling me, he said. He waved his phone at Nazreen, Nazreen Baji. Five missed calls while I'm in the shower. Jawad, Nazreen sighed. You'd think I'd have nothing else to do but cater to his demands. Well, if you helped him with the center, he wouldn't call so much, Nazreen Baji said. He needs you. This literacy center is going to get him more votes for the next election, but only if people attend it. 
Why is that my problem? I have more than enough of my own things to deal with. And I have better things to do than force people to attend a ridiculous center. Jawad, if a journalist comes snooping and finds no one there, it could hurt your father's election campaign. And that affects all of us. The school can sit empty after the election for all it matters. If we don't get at least one person there by next week, the teacher says he's going to leave. Jawad Sahib exhaled loudly, and then his eyes settled on mine. What about her? What do you mean? She can go to the center. He laughed at her astonished expression. It's not such a far-fetched idea, he said. We'll send her once a week. The center will officially have a student, and the teacher will have something to do. Problem solved. Jawad, it's a literacy center for adults. Better her than no one at all. Me? Attend a literacy center? That meant I could see a teacher again. Maybe they could show me how to write the poem I had wanted to write months earlier. Maybe they had books I could borrow. I studied Nazreen Baji, not daring to hope, but then... Fine, she said. Until we can get some actual other people to start going, she can attend.